Hello and welcome to Story Radio, the podcast for readers, writers and lovers of short stories everywhere. Today we're going to listen to Eventide by Kay Hart. There is a boy lying on the cliffside. This is what I always notice first, not the greenish, greyish sway of the grass or the tune of the birds that is not quite right, or the way the clouds brush the edge of the cliff beyond the drop as one large curtain of nothing. It is not that scroll of misty vapour, thick and unreachable, that draws me to the cliff. And it is not the slightly backward sky, or the inside-out trees that keep me there. There is a boy lying on the cliffside, He asks me to join him. Anya's hand is cold in mine, her fingers soft as she clutches three of mine. We're the only ones in the park tonight, the only ones bundled beneath the November chill. The park is not really a park. A rusted red swing set creaks in the breeze beside the monkey bars that had callous the hands of every child on this block. The monkey bars that I once fell from and broke four fingers on my left hand which never quite healed straight. Leaves blow up against the red and yellow rungs of the slide ladder, bright in the remnants of the afternoon rain, and dead and glinting beneath the lone street lamp at the edge of the playground. They litter the ground, soggy and soundless. They soak the toes of my shoes. Are you cold? I ask Anya. She nods, her teeth pressed together. Where's your coat? I left it at school. Her mittens, too. The school could have an entire lost and found dedicated solely to Anya. She would protest. She would say that no part of her was lost. I take off my hat and nestle it on her head before she lets go of my hand and runs off to play. I sit on a metal bench, the cold seeping through my jeans, and watch her. Around the park, apartment buildings stand vigil. Some of the windows are light with the glow of a kitchen lamp. Warm and still. During the day, children run and fall and stack wood chips and play store with other children who speak languages they do not understand. Words like yes and no can be universal. Names are not. Insults are. And above the park, their mothers glance out of those windows to check on them and turn dials on stoves with hands that are raw from the chemicals they use to clean hotels and giant red brick houses. But tonight the park is empty, except for the blowing leaves, and Anya crouching to collect stones, and me, and the boy who is lying on the cliffside. Are you real? I say to him. Is anything? That isn't what I asked. Beth? Anya says. I blink my eyes. My eyelashes are cold. Only Anya calls me Beth, and so I know that she at least is real. She's standing in front of me. Her hair is stuck to her cheeks. What? I say. Are you tired? Her thin yellow jacket hangs below her knees and far past her hands. It used to be mine. As better is still written in our mother's faded Hungarian script on the tag. She has pushed one of the sleeves up in a bunch by her wrist so she can hold the pebbles without obstruction. Her knuckles are burnt red by the cold. No, I say. Are you? A smile splits her freckled face. No. Well, then we can stay. She continues her mission to locate stones, singing softly to herself. It's a song she learned in school. I learned it too when I was very young, but I can't remember the words. Anya's voice is unaccented, except for a ghostly twist in her R's. It's a voice so unlike mine and those of our parents. The boy who is lying on the cliffside calls to me again. Are you still listening? Of course. Why are you here? Because when the wind blows just the right way, you can smell the flowers at the bottom. There aren't any flowers at the bottom, or if there are, then there's just hard ground beneath them. He shakes his head. The hard ground is up here. 
it slices your hand if you aren't careful. But down there, you could just lay down and rest. There's a thousand different kinds of flowers. My sister likes lilies of the valley. Across the park, Anya holds up a stone to the lamplight, then another, examining them as if they are little moons against the dark tree branches. Somewhere, a bird calls. A car passes through a puddle, and its headlights sweep shadows across the swings. Anya is happy here, despite the persistent chill. I know she will be even happier when it snows, and the pavement is covered in a blanket of white, and everything is quiet, and snowflakes drift lazily through the orange beams of the street lamps. She will kneel in a slush and freeze her fingers on the ice. She will love it, and she will not turn away. In that sense, my sister and I are very different. She bathes in the beauty of the snow and the rain and the bitter November nights in empty playgrounds. But she does not see the frostbite or the rust or the things that die when the snow falls. She does not hear the cries of the stray cats and dogs that shiver on concrete porches. And she does not notice the blood that drips from her palms when she scrapes them on icy asphalt. I cannot stop seeing them. Only when I visit the cliffside am I free of them. How do you get to the bottom? I ask the boy who is lying there. He shrugs. You jump? Will it hurt? No more than anything else? I slept on a broken cot for my entire childhood, shoved into the corner of the one-bedroom apartment we said we would move out of and never did reading books in a new language that my parents never learned, struggling to make out the words under the light of the kerosene lamp on the kitchen table. It would be nice to lay down in a bed of flowers and listen to the wind and feel the velvet petals beneath my hands. How long will it take to reach the bottom? I ask. It will be quicker than you think, like the last beat of a song. The bench does not seem so cold beneath my legs. I could enjoy that, I think. A rush of air, nothing beneath my feet, and then the softest bed. My eyes are tired. My feet hurt. Beth! I open my eyes. Anya stands before me, a little crease between her eyes, clutching her little pile of rocks to the front of her yellow jacket. I'm ready to go, she says. I stand up and take her hand and put some of the rocks in my pocket so she can carry them all. We walk out of the empty park and cross the rain-slick road to the opposite sidewalk. And behind us, the single street lamp blinks out and leaves the swings swathed in shadow. Are you coming home tonight? Anya asks. I don't think so. She purses her lips. You could just come for dinner. You could talk to mum and dad. She refers to them in English. It sounds fake and foolish to my ears, like she's talking about mannequins in a storefront. But she has only ever called them that. She does not know how to call them anything else. I don't think so, I say again, thinking of the cliffside and the drop and the flowers. A tree branch scratches the wall of the apartment building. Before we go inside, I pause. Anya? Yes? Sometimes I dream about a boy who is lying on a cliffside. She tilts her head, my hat crooked over her forehead. The little crease appears between her eyes again, like it does when she struggles to sort out a math problem. Lying? Yes. If he's lying then maybe you should try to find someone in your dreams that tells you the truth. The tree branch continues to scrape against the brick, steady and insistent. I take the rocks out of my pocket and pile them into her waiting hands, and she puts the last one back into my palm with her cold fingers. Are you coming to walk me to school tomorrow? Yes, I say. The rock is a brand on my skin. She smiles. Then I see you in the morning. Thanks, Beth. I see you then. I promise.
She hums that same melody to herself as she goes inside and closes the door behind her. And I listen until her footsteps disappear behind it. And then I turn and walk down the sidewalk through the dead leaves. And as I pass the park, the street lamp notices me and blinks on again, hurriedly. As if I just caught it dreaming when it was not supposed to. That was Eventide, written by Kay Hart and read by Claire Lubitz. The producer was Tabitha Potts. Thank you very much for listening, and do subscribe if you want to hear a different story every month. Goodbye.